God is with us. Uh, my name is Justin. And I'll, I would like to share my deepest condolences to the family of Prophet TB Joshua, uh, to Mummy Evelyn Joshua, a wonderful, mighty woman of faith. Uh, also to the children of Prophet TB Joshua, to Sarah, Promise, and Heart. Also to the Emmanuel TV team and the Skyan family. Uh, may God Almighty strengthen you and comfort you during this time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I would like to share a tribute to my father in the Lord, mentor, teacher, Prophet T.B. Joshua, a wonderful testimony of a young man from a humble background that overcame so many obstacles uh, to found the Synagogue Church of All Nations and touch and change lives, change nations, and change the world through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I met Prophet T.B. Joshua in 2006, and I was able to know him for the last 15 years. And I can tell you that Prophet T.B. Joshua lived like it was his last day on earth. You know, he often says, live each day as if it were your last, and one day you'll be right. And that was just exactly how the Prophet lived. You know, that's why he had no time for critics. He had no time for, for, for people that were speaking against him because he knew that he had been given assignment from the Lord. And so each and every day. He just followed the assignment of God, uh, winning souls through the gospel of salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Also, one of the characteristics and attributes and lessons uh, that I learned from Prophet T.B. Joshua is that his whole life is about prayer. Uh, everything about his life is about prayer. If you, you go to the church there, he has many prayer rooms over at the prayer mountain, a lot of places where he goes to for prayer. And he spends hours and hours and hours in prayer, reading his Bible, communicating to God. And just that's where he built his relationship with God and his love for God, experiencing the love of Jesus Christ, the love of God, while spending many of his hours uh, in prayer. His whole life was about prayer. He says, prayer to a believer is like breathing, is like oxygen. So he just spent most of his life a life of prayer even if he went to crusades and in other countries uh, he would go to the, the event he would have his place of prayer from the prayer to the crusade ground back to the place where he would stay and then from there he would head back to the synagogue church of all nations so his life was all about prayer i can remember many times uh, i would follow the prophet uh, to the prayer mountain and uh, you know while he was at the church he'll be attending to people from all over the world you know, for, for, you know, and also, you know, praying for the sick, doing the ministry of healing, deliverance, prophecy, and preaching the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ to the world. And he also tend to many visitors all day, also had time to teach the disciples. But after working all day, he would still go to the, to the prayer mountain at night. And I would follow him to the prayer mountain, you know, 11, 12 o'clock at night. He would go into his prayer room. And there, you know, he would be praying, seeking the face of God. So he would, he would be inside of his prayer room and I would be just outside uh, with, with some other person. And uh, he would keep praying there throughout the whole night, not even go to his bed. The time he was meant to go to rest, to sleep on his bed, that's the time he would be in his prayer room praying, seeking the face of God. And he would come out of the prayer room six o'clock in the morning at the prayer mountain and say, okay, Justin, let's go back to the church. And would return back to the church and he would have a shower eat his breakfast, and then he would do it all over again. See people from all over the world, take time to teach the disciples, take time to run all the, to do the administration of the church. And then in the nighttime, he would go back again to the prayer mountain and do the same thing. Go into his prayer room, pray all night long, seek the face of God in prayer, receive directions, instruction, and revelation from God, and then do the same thing. He'd go back into the church. And I remember uh, there was one particular day, he'd be praying at the prayer mountain, throughout the entire night you know from from uh you know midnight through to six in the morning to seven in the morning and i'd be very close by lying there on the uh, on the ground and he would just call us over and he'd say to me it was like after praying all night you know it'd be like six seven in the morning and he'd call me over justin he says can you see the reason why uh you know can you see what it takes to operate at a very high level and i said yes sir it's, 
it's a life of sacrifice. And he said, yeah, can you see why there are not, not as many people uh, operating at that level? And I said, yes, because it's a very uncomfortable lifestyle um, that you have to, to live to be able to operate at that higher level. And so uh, the life of Prophet T.B. Joshua is just, is just all about prayer. Uh, also, uh, another very important characteristic and attribute of Prophet T.B. Joshua is his love for God. He has just an incredible love for God. And uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua would often say, ministry does not begin with a love for people, but it begins with a love for God. And that love overflows to people. And you'd often say that love is the force that sets faith working and love never gives up. And you could see that it was, he had such an amazing love for God and that was expressed through his life, through his ministry, through, you see, when, when people were receiving healing, deliverance, uh, salvation, it's expressed through that love of God in his life. And I remember when I met Prophet T.B. Joshua in 2006, I was uh, depressed, living in darkness, living in the world. And when I met Prophet T.B. Joshua for the first time uh, behind the scenes at a, one of the pastors' conference, I just remembered uh, I, I encountering him. And he didn't say anything. He just smiled. But I just experienced the incredible, tangible love of God. And it just hit me like a, like a wave. And I remember that day I was boiling out in tears. And I just knew that it was the love of the Holy Spirit. And it was that love of God through the prophet uh, that changed my destiny, changed my life. I, had, uh, I, was, I was planning on doing other things, but uh, it was through the love of God, through Prophet T.B. Joshua's life, uh, that gave me a, an interest to know more about Jesus, know more about the, the Bible, know more about the Word of God. So it was the love of God in the ministry, just like um, Jesus said to Apostle Peter, Do you love me? And Peter said, yes, yes, I do love you. And then Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? And so the, one of the great characteristics of Prophet T.B. Joshua was his love for God. He was known by his love and everybody that encountered him and met him. It was the love of God uh, in his heart that, that touched the people. And he would say, you begin to succeed with your life when the pains and hurts of others begin to matter to you. And so that was what Prophet T.B. Joshua's ministry the foundation of his ministry was simply his love for god and it was that love that he spent so many hours in prayer reading his bible developing his relationship with god and that was the love that he was able to give to others like you'd often say the holy spirit produces rivers of love life joy and peace from you from you to meet the needs of others and that was just a great uh, testament uh, to prophet tb joshua's life uh, another one of the characteristics uh, uh, that I learned from Prophet T.B. Joshua was just the tremendous amount of charity, the tremendous amount of, of generosity that he would give to people um, all over the world. You know, just there was so much charity within Nigeria, within all the, the nations of the world. There was just so much uh, uh, charity works that, that he had done from widows, orphans, people that received deliverance from armed robbery, uh, people that were living life of sin, prostitution, etc. They would all receive deliverance and uh, he would help them start their life anew with different charity works. So much charity that was not uh, recorded uh, through the camera, but there was just loads of generosity to people all over the world. There was one particular charity mission that I was able to follow, Prophet TV Joshua. From, we traveled from Nigeria to Ecuador. Uh, there was an earthquake that had happened in Ecuador that had destroyed one of the schools in a remote area. In, uh, in Ecuador, in the middle of a jungle. So they, their school had destroyed because of the earthquake and Prophet TB Joshua um, and the Emmanuel TV team, they, 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 they rebuilt the school there and Prophet TB Joshua wants to go to Ecuador to open the school and pray and counsel for all the students and the teachers. So I had the wonderful grace to be able to follow Prophet TB Joshua to Ecuador and uh, we traveled hours and hours and hours through the jungle in this four-wheel drive truck. And, uh, you know, it started raining and the four-wheel drive couldn't drive through the jungle. So the prophet uh, said, okay, let's, let's all start walking. So we started walking. It started raining, raining. And so I had to use a, a leaf as an umbrella. But, you know, through that whole journey, he was just so enthusiastic, so excited um, because that was his heart. His heart was for charity and for for helping, uh, being used as a 
channel of generosity and charity. So it's, it was so exciting to be with him on that charity mission. And I just remember it just took hours and hours before we finally got to the place uh, where the school was rebuilt. And Prophet TB Joshua arrived there and he, he prayed uh, for the students and for the teachers. And he opened that school uh, for them. And it was just such a wonderful experience. Uh, everybody really, really enjoyed it there. And then, you know, after that, he had to travel another hours and hours and hours to travel back uh, to where he was staying. But that was just one of the biggest characteristics I learned from the prophet was just his love for generosity and for charity through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And finally, one of the greatest legacies of uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua was, uh, and his calling, uh, was to raise disciples of all nations. And you'd often say that the greatest calling uh, that God Almighty and the assignment that God had given him was to raise disciples from all nations, to, was to raise men and women of God who would travel throughout the earth, preach the good news of Jesus Christ, uh, heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, uh, win souls for the kingdom of God, and, um, and, to, and to shake the world through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that was his uh, greatest assignment. So with Prophet T.B. Joshua, when raising the disciples, he was incredibly loving, incredibly patient. Uh, he would take his time to help them discover their, 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 uh, their strengths, help them to discover God's calling for their lives. And also he was very, very patient in helping them with their weaknesses, helping them with their bad characters, and helping them to overcome uh, their weaknesses and to build their strengths, to build their character so that they would be able to maintain uh, God's gift uh, in their lives. And that was uh, the greatest legacy of uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua. And so now our Father in the Lord, Prophet T.B. Joshua has completed his assignment. He has fought the good fight, finished the race, and has received the crown of righteousness. Uh, our Father in the Lord, Prophet T.B. Joshua, has closed his eyes in all things of this world. And he has opened his eyes in a world of glory. So we thank God Almighty for the life of Prophet T.B. Joshua. And, uh, and now he has, he has raised up all disciples from all nations, uh, men and women of God, and will continue that wonderful legacy and share the good news of Jesus Christ all over the world and also uh, the teachings of Jesus Christ uh, through Prophet T.B. Joshua. So we thank God Almighty for his life. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Prophet T.B. Joshua, for being the father, for being the mentor that I had never had. I ask God Almighty and I thank God that he sent you into my life and for all the wonderful seeds that you planted uh, into my life as well thank you daddy to meet again in heaven in jesus mighty name